So we started the course with the examples uh, of uh, cross-sectional models and the uh, latest theme was uh, the so-called time series models. So in this 11th theme, then we combine these both cross-sectional and uh, time dimensions to, to so-called panel data models. And uh, one of the central themes in panel data econometrics is uh, so-called latent heterogeneity, which I will introduce in this first video lesson. Firstly, briefly about panel data. So, um, as I mentioned, then we have both this kind of uh, cross-sectional time series dimensions present in the data. In some sense, you could think about, uh, uh, for example, this kind of macroeconomic panel of OECD countries. So we have uh, some some uh, sample of n countries, and we observe them over uh, capital T years. So the same country is observed in the same data set, uh, capital T times. And so in that sense, we have N times capital T observations in our, our data set. So this term panel data originally come from, uh, I believe, in this kind of macroeconomic panels of, uh, of uh, countries. Uh, there used to be this kind of separate term like so-called longitudinal data when we refer to, for example, household surveys or firm level uh data but nowadays this term panel data covers also this kind of uh, micro data so so i mainly mention this uh, longitudinal term that it doesn't confuse you if you encounter it to some 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 context that uh, it's it's refers to the same situation as the as the panel data and um, the reason that uh, that uh, nowadays we have uh, better and better data sets and uh, and this data is more systematically collected so so in many applications this kind of panel data is uh, also available in the context that in previous times it might have not been available so this is perhaps one reason also why panel data econometrics is a uh, uh, growing and uh, increasingly important area and which can also be useful in other areas such as uh, finance or business analytics. Okay, so a couple of conceptual points also still before I go to the more empirical examples. So notice that uh, panel data may be balanced. Uh, it's called balanced if, uh, if uh, all these uh, countries or firms are observed over all of the time periods. But uh, very often we have some gaps in our data set. So then we have so-called unbalanced panel. So one example is, uh, for example, in the, if you have some firm data, so there will be some new firms entering the market. There will be some, uh, some firms exiting the market through some bankruptcy, or maybe there will be some mergers and acquisitions or the, or the one company splits to multiple firms. So, very often, for example, firm data is, is unbalanced by its nature. So uh, in this uh, following example, I will focus on the example of um, balanced data, but uh, I want to emphasize that, uh, that uh, in the real world applications, then unbalanced data is very common and uh, there is not really any, any problem in modeling unbalanced data as well. So, so you can, uh, you shouldn't worry if your, if your data is actually unbalanced and, uh, there is no reason to, to artificially make it balanced by starting to delete some, some time periods or some, some observations to make it balanced. So, so if, if, you're, if there is, for example, this kind of entry and exit of firms to, the, uh, to, the, to and from the data set, then, then it's better model it as an unbalanced panel rather than make it, rather than force it to, to become balanced. Another thing is that, uh, that uh, um, even if we talk about an unbalanced panel, we, we normally think about a fixed panel. So it is this kind of um, firms that are observed in the sample are observed throughout this time period. And, and, uh, and uh, if it is unbalanced, then it is indeed this kind of entry or exit of, uh, of, the, of the firms to the market. Uh, there exist also so-called rotating panels where random sampling is applied to this, uh, this, uh, this panel of firms. So this is, for example, quite common in uh, agriculture, where there is a very large number of farms. And uh, so then, then often there is such kind of uh, random sampling to the panel. And, uh, and even, even when we 
combined uh, agricultural statistics in Finland, then it's based on this kind of rotating panel. So there is a kind of a sampling waves and the same same farm would be observed in the panel for for a certain number of years. But then um, if the if the farm is no longer included in the panel, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that the uh, farm has gone bankrupt or or stopped operation. It may be that it's just not in, included in the random sampling anymore. So that's important to note in some context, but uh, but uh, for the purposes of this course, we will assume a fixed panel. And this is also what uh, most of the econometric theory is also focusing on, I would say, the fixed panels. So let me give you an empirical example. So I will now focus on these electricity distribution firms that I also, also uh, already mentioned in the, when we discussed the uh, instrumental variables and the endogeneity problem. So um, one thing that uh, that uh, I often get uh, questions from students is that uh, when, when, when having panel data, for example, in master's thesis work, that how to how to organize or how to how to utilize this panel data dimension. And um, in some sense, it's surprisingly simple. It's more of more like obvious, but I want to point, point it out. So I have here illustrated this, uh, this, uh, this just this um, data set of electricity firms. And remember that, uh, that I was modeling the uh, production function, we had output and we have uh, operational expenditure that uh, refers to mainly labor input and then we have capital capital stock we had two different measures of capital stock but uh, but here just let's let's utilize one of them and uh, so i have here this kind of uh, firm id number as the first uh, first variable so so this is just some kind of arbitrary code so this doesn't really mean mean anything it's just to to in order to identify that which firm we have so so this uh, time period of this panel starts from 2005 so i have just here just illustrated that how i have organized the data so we need to need to have a clearly uh, some indicator this kind of id variable to, to identify that which firms uh, are or which observations are from the same firm and then we need to also this kind of time variable here it is the year but it could be equally well month or quarter or 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 an hour or day or whatever so so we need some kind of time variable and we need some kind of id variable to identify the, the firms in this case id variable could be also if you have some individuals or households or countries or whatever so so those uh, leftmost and rightmost columns are very important when we when we model the panel data in practice. But otherwise, we just uh, stack these kind of different years and different observations in the same way as we would have it if it was a time series model or if it was a cross-sectional model. So uh, we just stack this. We, we just have one column for this uh, output variable. We have one column for the OPEX and capital stock variable. And uh, whichever variables we have for the regression models, they are just uh, organized in columns. Okay. And then we need to have uh, two separate variables, this ID code and the year code that we need to, to identify those uh, years and uh, firms in this case to, to make it the panel data. And uh, if you do, for example, some panel data modeling in Stata, then uh, you need to, uh, you need to, to select the, which which variable is the ID variable and which variable is the time time variable. Okay, but otherwise you just organize these variables in columns. So you stack these different time periods and different firms uh, on top of each other. So so uh, then the same. Uh, so this is now this data is organized by the by the year, but equally well you could then reorganize it in uh, ascending order of the ID code, for example. Okay, but that's important to clarify because this is often the first obstacle is that, okay, how do I organize the panel data to be able to use the regression analysis? So this is how to organize it. I hope that this example uh, illustrated. So then ultimately we just, just use the, the regression model. So I have here, here I will focus on this um, notation of the Cobb-Douglas production function. So as the dependent variable, I have uh, 
uh, logarithm of y, and then we have these two explanatory variables are L and L, so logarithm of labor input, and L and K, the logarithm of capital input. So this would then, then yield this kind of uh, Cobb-Douglas model of the production functions. And uh, then I have indicated this uh, beta coefficient. So beta one is the usual intercept term. Uh, the main interest would be on this uh, output elasticity. So I have indicated those this uh, beta L and beta K. So those are the parameters of interest. So notice now one notable difference to the regression models when we had in a cross-sectional setting, we had this index uh, uh, or uh, subscript i that runs from 1 to n. In the time series models, we use the subs subscript t. And now when we move to the panel data models, we have both i and t elements. So, so notice that this uh, we have all combinations of i and t in the in this data. So we have y in uh, y i t l i t k i t, and then the error term I divide in two parts. And this is important now. Yeah, this is what this uh, main action in the panel data modeling is actually focused on. So instead of using this kind of usual epsilon, I in some sense decompose this epsilon to two parts. So I have this kind of uh, what we call time invariant uh, uh, ui. So notice that now, now with this u term, uh, we can think about this u as a random variable, but it is a firm specific constant. So it doesn't change over time, it's just ui. And then we have VIT, which is time varying part. So that is kind of uh, an error term. We can think about both U and V as this parts of the error term epsilon, but uh, we, we distinguish this kind of time invariant, uh, time invariant firm specific UI and then time varying random noise V. Okay. And uh, we will, I, I have here mentioned that this UI as what represents this latent heterogeneity. So what does this latent heterogeneity really mean? So latent refers to the fact that it's something that we cannot observe. So obviously if we, if there's, for example, some kind of characteristics of the operating environment of the firms uh, that we do observe, then we could include in the model directly. So we could add some additional explanatory variables. But uh, if it's latent heterogeneity, it means that we do not observe it. And time invariant means that, that it just doesn't change over time. So uh, this is what this, uh, this uh, panel data model can be very useful for, for modeling this kind of heterogeneity. So heterogeneity means that this, these uh, firms are different, their operating environments are different. And by introducing this kind of UI term to the model, we can then try to capture this kind of, kind of uh, fact that these firms can be can be different from each other in in some unobserved ways okay so that's the this kind of unobserved differences that we that we do want to model but we cannot cannot observe directly so this kind of kind of latent heterogeneity of course would be very relevant also for example if you would model some some uh, cross country panels so if you have uh, different countries uh, which have different economic structure, different kind of climate conditions, and so on. So, so the similar kind of reasoning would be would be there. And in many many contexts, then this uh, this kind of uh, latent heterogeneity is of course relevant. And uh, in some sense, uh, we could also argue that the panel data opens a door of uh, of modeling this kind of UI term, which is not really possible in the in the cross sectional setting or or time series setting. So what if we just then, then run OLS regression that we have used? So, so what's the problem if, if there is such kind of latent heterogeneity present uh, in this? So, so in this formulation, this is just the same uh, regression model that we introduced before. But now I have just, uh, just introduced this kind of epsilon tilde where I have, uh, so in some sense, pooled this, uh, these u and v terms together. So, so Question now is, what if we just ignore this latent heterogeneity? We can, of course, pull these uh, two types of error to this kind of composite error term, epsilon tilde, and just uh, apply ordinary least squares regression to this kind of panel data. So obviously, there's technically no, no, no problem in doing that. But the question is more that uh, 
what are the econometric models or econometric difficulties so as a simple thinking exercise for you now now uh, question is if there is this kind of uh, time invariant latent heterogeneity term you are present in this setting uh, would it violate the assumptions of the order least squares estimator and which assumptions specifically okay so you can you can pause for a moment to think about that so here is just uh, just to illustrate uh, we come back to that question shortly but uh, but I just want to show you that, of course, this pooled regression is possible. We just apply uh, uh, usual Odin least squares estimator to this linear regression model, and we can get this kind of coefficient. So notice that uh, if we compare to these models with um, with uh, um, instrumental variables, so so now we have this kind of output elasticity for the OPEX variable 0 0.63, and for the capital 0 0.4. So, so this would suggest that the, the uh, scale elasticity would be the sum of those two coefficients. So the scale elasticity would be slightly greater than one. So the sum of these two, two beta coefficients would be somewhat greater than one. So now I don't take into account the intercept term, but just the first two coefficients. And we also get a quite good empirical fit in terms of the R-squared statistic. Uh, so R-squared greater than 0 0.92. So everything looks on the surface fine if, if we do this kind of pooled regression. And again, there's like, a, like a, from the computational point of view, there's nothing, nothing uh, uh, wrong in doing that. But now let's come to the question that, okay, what if there is indeed this kind of uh, latent heterogeneity present in, the, in this kind of panel data model? Then what kind of econometric uh, problems there could be? So here's the answer. So firstly, suppose that uh, there is the possibility that this latent heterogeneity correlates with our explanatory variables L and K. So this would be this uh, uh, typical kind of simultaneity bias that we discussed in the context of endogeneity. So for example, if this, uh, this uh, latent heterogeneity U you can think about this U as kind of a level of uh, productivity or technical efficiency of the firms. So if there is this kind of time invariant differences in the efficiency of the firms, then uh, that could influence the uh, investment decision to capital and it could also influence the demand for labor input. So if the, if the firm managers observe this UI or they are aware of this UI, then it can influence the L and K variables and there would be endogeneity problem. Okay, so in fact, then the panel data techniques might be one way of dealing with this endogeneity. Uh, so instrumental variables uh, was this other, other technique that we considered earlier, but panel data can be another way to, to take this kind of endogeneity into account. Now, secondly, if we do not have this kind of endogeneity issue, then uh, it is also a possibility that uh, e even if U doesn't correlate with this uh, uh, L and K, so the explanatory variables, there would still be heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. So that might not be immediately obvious, but, uh, but uh, notice, of course, that uh, if the, we, we think about, uh, for example, heteroscedasticity first. So, Notice that the variance of this uh, epsilon tilde is not constant because there is this uh, this um, random ui term present in it, and uh, depending on whether this u is uh, is larger or smaller or closer to zero and or further away from zero, then of course the variance of this epsilon is different, conditional on this u. And then of course there is such kind of serial correlation or otherwise autocorrelation present because uh, obviously this uh, epsilon it uh, would correlate with epsilon i in some other period let's say t plus one or t minus one because this, it shares the same ui component so because this ui is present both in period epsilon i t minus one and epsilon it and epsilon i t plus one so definitely there's also autocorrelation so Therefore, also then, then the treatment of this uh, heterogeneity differs. That uh, that important question here is that uh, that uh, 
uh, can we assume that there is no endogeneity that this ui doesn't correlate with l of nk or not because then then in any case we need to somehow take into account this uh, heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation uh, if it is possible to assume that uh, the explanatory variables do not correlate with the heterogeneity but if not then also we need to take into account the endogeneity problem so notice now that this uh, this uh, panel data regression with this heterogeneity term in a quite nice way brings us back to this uh, this um, classic assumptions of the ordinary least squares estimator and also this uh, treatment of the of the uh, endogeneity and uh, and other other problems so in that sense this panel data theme quite nicely helps us to summarize what we have learned already in this course and we can utilize those to to deal with this kind of heterogeneity okay so the in the next video i will then discuss with you this classic fixed effects and random effects treatments of the of this kind of uh, heterogeneity problem and indeed i already can reveal at this point that the critical issue here is whether there's endogeneity present or not that whether we can should use fixed effects or whether we can use the random effects approach so we'll continue from there and thanks for your attention